Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Falcon 2024 here in Las Vegas. Resilient by design is the theme of this show. I'm Rebecca Knight, my co-host Dave Vellante. We've got two great CUBE veterans returning to here for the show. We have J.R. Balaji, he is the Director of Product Security and Manageability Client Solutions Group, Dell Technologies. Welcome, J.R.B. Great to be here. And Rick Echevarria, he is VP Intel Security Center of Excellence at Intel. Welcome back to yes, the CUBE, both for of us. you. And I want to first congratulate you, J.R.B., because I know that, uh, that you were named Global Partner of the Year, so that's very exciting news. Yeah, it was very humbling to go up and receive the award on behalf of Dell Technologies yesterday as the the Global Partner of the Year, and it's just testament to the work we have been doing with CrowdStrike and Intel and a lot more that is up ahead of us, uh, really trying to help our customers defend themselves better. Exactly. So we're talking today about why built-in security is critical for cyber survival. I want to start, JRB, by just having you give, us, give our viewers a broad brush of how you see the changing threat environment today. Sure. Uh, threat landscape is complex, that's no surprise, and it's been evolving pretty rapidly over the last several years. It will continue to evolve. You know, I always tell people, look at the MITRE attack framework. You know, the every, like they're constantly adding new techniques, and that's what customers are up against, right? In order to better defend against these really persistent and determined adversaries, organizations have to think about security a lot more holistically than they ever did which means not just focusing on software defenses that they're all used to, uh, not looking at a Morton Castle approach, but really looking at the entire PC ecosystem and stack, uh, including deeply embedded firmware, BIOS, and supply chain layers that are really hard to detect and respond against. So that's kind of what customers are facing, and we really want to make sure that uh, the combined approach between Dell and Intel is to really look at that entire ecosystem and how we can help our customers protect that entire stack. Well, what is that approach, Rick? Can you describe that a little bit? Because you guys have gone deep you know, into the stack, yep. which most people don't see. They just, yep. they purchased and hope that you've <laughs> got them covered. Yes. <laughs> well, I think people don't understand the complexity of a device and how creative the attackers are to find any possible gap that you have left. So the approach that we take in collaboration with Dell and CrowdStrike is uh, security in depth and we do it by design, not only by looking at every aspect of computing from the CPU to the BIOS to the firmware and to the applications, but also something that is very important is your assurance practices. Not only in the way in which you're de designing anything about the platform, so just think about a graphics driver and the amount of work that we put into making sure that the developers of those drivers are doing it with security by design, right? So you have to look at all aspects and you have to realize again, there's so many layers within the stack. If you leave a gap, they're going to find it. Okay, so, but neither of you are considered you know, application software companies, you all both write yeah. software companies. So in that context, when you said you look all the way through, you said the CPU, the BIOS, et cetera, the firmware all the way up to the apps, what are you looking for in the app? Is it the seams in between those layers of the stack? And what specifically are you providing to, yeah. to, to no, protect well, you that? Look at, you look at things like seams, you look at application behaviors. Um, you know, over the last six years, we actually have built AI into the platform to go look at the deepest, deepest processing patterns of applications to make sure that you start detecting what could potentially be malware on the platform, right? And if you think it's something like, uh, you know, you talked about, you asked a question about the application layer. To some extent, where the industry started with, with the OS and the applications. Guess what, we've protected that and we've done a pretty good job. Where are they going now? They're going the other way. And the, more, the deeper they get into the platform, that foundation, the more control they have to everything that's above the stack. That's where a lot of the innovation with Dell is coming into play, because Dell and Intel have recognized they're going in the other direction. Like they get the blueprints of the building yes. and they're going <laughs> deep into the bowels of the, the yeah, structure. Exactly. Because that's where all the, the damage can be done. Yes. As I alluded it. earlier, right, also, if you look at MITRE techniques, these are the evolving techniques, right? So, okay, you had executable files, malware defenses got better. Okay, now go with fileless attacks, right? Uh, supply chain was not uh, that big of a deal a few years ago. Now supply chain compromises are starting to rise up. Uh, rootkit and bootkit attacks were not still still not as common, 
but those are the attack techniques, right? So for an attacker who is determined to get into an environment, they can use any combination of these tools and techniques to get in. Mm -hmm. How they use and what combination they use is really up to them. Yeah. So organizations have to have this holistic defense that looks at all these layers, not just look at software defense, but also hardware assisted security. And devices are so vulnerable, why? Because A, they're complex, but B, there's humans behind them, <laughs> okay. right? So those are the two <laughs> things you got to attack, right? So maybe you could discuss how you're attacking complexity and bad behavior by humans. Yeah, you want to start? Sure. Um, first of all, there are lots of devices versus yeah. how many servers there are versus how many endpoints. There's a lot many of them. Again, when I say endpoints, it's not just the PC devices, it's also USB drives, hard disk, everything is, is liable to exposure. Then you have humans behind them. I call them click, click happy users, right? So they just like to click on things. Uh, and that's why that you have this perfect recipe of, of disaster where attackers just find it much easier. You know, most of these crime syndicates, it's not worthy of their time to go after the high, most complex attack techniques, right? They will usually try some technique that's more commonly used, well proven, get users clicking on things. All they need is that one point of entry and they can make their way do their lateral movement and get to whatever objective that they have within an organization. Yeah, yeah. And I think you're seeing a lot of new types of attacks, not only fileless, which sometimes can be sort of stealth, but you look at business, email compromise types of attack, deep fakes, audio, video. I mean, so, you know, and with the advent of AI, it's great that you're going to bring all these workloads that are going to allow you to be productive and so forth and so on. But guess what? Is a, you're expanding the surface area of attack at the same time. So, the, sorry, I got one, uh, go ahead, because I'm going to change the subject to AI PCs, but you got a follow up? Yeah, I, I do, only because you are describing a world that is exceedingly complex and where our adversaries have to be, are incredibly savvy and they are yeah, well man. resourced and they have lots of different and new emerging tools at their disposal. So I, I wanted to ask about how you work together. And as you said, this is where the innovation happens because you need to stay ahead of them. Yes. So how do you work together to come up with sure. these solutions? So uh, the main thing is the approach, right? We operate with the adversarial mindset. Two things that's important to us, right? Uh, it's not uh, the attacks that have already emerged. Yes, we have to tackle the attacks that have already fast emerged, but we also look at attacks that are emerging. Uh, mm -hmm. Like Rick talked about fileless attacks, right? So fileless attacks were just starting to emerge and you don't want it to become mainstream, highly exploited by adversaries before you start acting on them. So we're always looking at how an adversary operates. We do threat modeling, we look at how some of these ecosystems within the PC design can be exploited, such as supply chain. We shift extremely left also and look at, I, I joke with my, my friends here, uh, the security of a PC begins even before it's assembled, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So starting really extreme left from the time we procure and assemble devices, what kind of hardware components we procure, what kind of protections we put around place, how are our supply chain hubs uh, protected, all of that goes into the ecosystem. Yep. And then collaborate, as you mentioned, close those seams, right? Yep. Between the deep stuff that we do on the silicon level, systems level work that Dell does, close the seams. So I'm super excited about AI PCs. I, I, I'm envisioning the entire personal computing experience changing, I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when PCs first came about, mm -hmm. floppy disks with free hard disk, right? Okay, so I've seen it all. Uh, and, and I think there's a renaissance coming mm -hmm. in AI yes. PCs. AR, VR, embedded, um, neural processing units, being able to speak to my PC, the entire experience is just, so I wonder if you could sort of describe your thoughts on AI PCs, and is it going to make us more vulnerable or is it going to help us be more <laughs> secure? Ooh, good question. Yeah, we talk about uh, this, this paradigm of AI for evil and AI for good, right? So, I mean, AI is a technology. Just like any other tool, it's available to defenders. It's also available to adversaries. Uh, we know adversaries are going to use AI, right, for evil. Uh, we should be doing AI, more AI, for good, and do it faster so that, you know, they don't do bad things. So from that perspective, I think for us, uh, the emergence of NPU has been great. Uh, we believe like today, uh, one of the most common tussle that happens between IT and security is that for IT, productivity is paramount. They want the users productive, they want as much of CPU and memory freed up so that the users can actually do their job. From a security practitioner's perspective, they have to defend the organization against this 
very complex, highly determined, persistent adversaries, so they stack up a bunch of tools. What happens is that there's this constant tussle of who's going to get hold of how much of CPU capacity that happens. I think AIPC is a, is a boon for that reason because it is now proven few, through few of the POCs we have done where we can actually significantly reduce the ability to detect and respond to threats, do certain types of security inferencing and analysis on the endpoint that you could not do before or you had to do before with a lot of CPU bandwidth, 30, 40% of CPU bandwidth. Now you could do that for far less. Case in point is there was a malware clustering uh, analysis that was done in conjunction with Intel and CrowdStrike, and it took 35% of CPU consumption, around 35%. With the NPU in the AIPC, that's down to 1%. That's significant yeah. of what you can do. Yeah. And what you're basically doing with that is you're bringing one more element, one more asset to help defenders defend. So if you think about the last few years, we have done a lot of work with CPU and CPU telemetry and wrapping AI around that telemetry to understand application behaviors. That's very good for things like ransomware detection. Now you, then we added the use of the graphics processing unit and the offload to that to go address mile, uh, these fileless attacks. But you know what the challenge there is? The reason attackers love fileless attacks, they're very expensive to sort of remit, to analyze from a CPU perspective, right, from a graphics perspective. Well now, in the past we used to have to take offload to the GPU and then you would send the analysis to the cloud, okay? With the NPU, you're actually going to bring some of the most complex algorithms and CrowdStrike has written two great blocks on this. They're bringing those algorithms to the endpoint, less than 1% CPU utilization and you're removing the trip to the cloud your time to detection gets shortened, much more efficient. You also probably save some costs on all the bandwidth and traffic consumption. So it's a great story for CISOs, yeah. and then from an IT and security perspective, it reduces the compromise. It's a great use case for real-time inference at the edge. Yes. We talk about that all the time, but that's an, a practical example. Absolutely, isn't it? absolutely. It's actually three things, right? Real-time inferencing on the edge, uh, doing less latency, and more productivity for the end users, right? So all of that is, is the value that is packed mm. inside that. Yeah. And the industry, by the way, sorry to, it's really adopting this. We have at least over 13 security use cases, that, that new security use cases for defenders that are actually now using the NPU. And again, it's a lot of capability that wasn't possible because you didn't have that type of compute on the endpoint. Well, at a time when, when your business is so integral to how we live our lives as, as, as humans, as employees, as managers, as leaders, as citizens, when we have so much mm -hmm. at stake right, right now, um, how, uh, how, do you, how do you see your roles going forward and evolving as the threat landscape evolves? You want to well, like, I mean, our roles continue to be important. The, uh, the attackers are not going to stop. Uh, it's very difficult for, for defenders, right? Defenders have to be right all the time. Attackers only have to be right once. So we have to continue to bring our innovation and collaboration as partners to, again, protect that very complex surface area of attack that the users are using. So you talked about scenes. I think one of the things is, uh, to add to that, uh, you have these tool sets, these can exist in silo too. They will still sort of do their stuff, but the value is not there. Mm -hmm. The biggest value that the customers derive, as I said at the very beginning is, for customers to see and detect and respond to these kinds of hardware-based attacks, they're highly, highly stealthy in nature, and there are not that many tools that are built out there that can detect and respond. And by bringing our tool sets together between Dell, Intel, and CrowdStrike together, uh, we can now play off of each other, right? So we can, Intel will look at certain types of uh, behaviors using silicon, Dell builds uh, several different uh, additional capabilities starting from supply chain, bias and firmware analysis, and all of this is valuable telemetry that we want security practitioners to see within their existing tool sets, so say Falcon platform. So to that, that end, we are also starting to do more uh, collaboration and integration. Uh, we are starting down that path, and as we do more of those integrations, for security practitioners, they now have all of the software visibility they needed for, through their Falcon platform, but they also get CPU and hardware telemetry plugging into that. So, Intel and Dell, Obviously, you're big targets. We work with both your companies. Both, both companies are clients of ours, so we, we get a little bit of insight to your security. So my question is around, what 
good security looks like today and how it's going to change. Your, your companies are world class, but your targets. Yep. So a lot of what good security looks like today is restrictions on things that you can and can't do. Like for instance, when we try to give you access to certain software that we've developed, it's like, oh no, 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 no. It's not that simple. You got to go through IT and they got to make sure that it's you know, got all the pen tests and everything else. Okay, great. But I'm sure internally you face this every day. You can't do that. You can't use that LLM. These are the approved, whatever it is. You can't write code with that LLM. You know, I'm making this up. But, so that's today's state of the art. What do you think security, good security looks like three to five years from now? So to me, good security is a combination of a few things. I'll go back to what I said earlier, right? It's being uh, operating with constantly with an adversarial mindset and building protections not after they have fast emerged, but even as they're emerging, right? So we continue to build upon that kind of real innovation. Time. Yeah. Exactly, real time. But as you build them, ultimately we have to bring them all together, right? Real security is, um, I, I would say just, just starting with uh, using these tools, uh, giving all of the telemetry in real time to customers that they can leverage within their tool sets and be able to respond to it much faster. Uh, we talk about mean time to detection. We see, we see and hear this. The cyber crime breakout time continues to shrink every year. It was, I think, 82 minutes in 2022. 2023, it's 62 minutes. I think it's going to go down. I think yeah. we can see the pattern here. But as these things happen, real good security is operating from an adversarial mindset building protections, but more importantly, make sure these tools talk to each other uh, constantly. Uh, and as AI use cases emerge, using these kind of modern innovations to uh, allow defenders to operate at scale using AI. Mm -hmm. Because the adversaries are going to be doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think for us, um, it starts with a philosophy that security is there to enable us to go faster. That's always been a philosophy of our chief information security officer and he does an outstanding job of managing that. And then again, consistently look at what can I leverage from the capabilities that the ecosystem is building to, make, to stay a step ahead of mm -hmm. the attackers, right? And you, you, it requires investment, it requires an understanding of the capabilities of the ecosystem, software, hardware, et cetera, but that's what every chief information security officer is going to have to be dealing with. You have to stay ahead, try to stay ahead yeah. Uh, by investing in technology and good practices. Words to live by. <laughs> Rick, JRV, thank you both so much for coming back on theCUBE. Always a pleasure. Great conversation, thanks guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Back. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Falcon 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.